Hello there! Just a couple of days ago, Zensir released an exciting new ControlNet model called SDXL1 for all, or ControlNet Union SDXL 1.0. In light of this development, we've put together a quick, impromptu video to showcase the possibilities this new model offers. Stay tuned for some impressive AI-generated images and new creative opportunities. In just a moment, I'll show you the website where you can find all the information you need about this new model. It's also already available in the Comfy Manager since yesterday. I'll guide you through the process of downloading the SDXL1 for all model using the Comfy Manager. You'll find all the necessary information and links to Zensier's Hugging Face page in the video description, so you can easily access and explore this new, exciting tool. On this page, you'll also find some examples showcasing the different possibilities offered by the SDXL1 for all model as well as instructions on how to combine it with an open pose control net for even more creative options. This versatility allows for a wide range of unique and impressive AI-generated images. We were already excited last week about how good the new Xenzia models are. And now, one for all. How cool is that? Absolutely fantastic! What's especially great about this new model is that we no longer have to worry about choosing the right model for which preprocessor, plus, we can save some precious disk space. For computers like ours, LoRa ControlNet models are still worth considering due to their VRAM saving properties. But overall, SDXL, one for all, is just plain awesome. With the introduction of the SDXL one for all model, your workflow has never been easier. Simply select this new model in all of your ControlNet loaders and you're ready to go. No more worrying about which specific model to choose for each preprocessor image. Just pick SDXL1 for all and focus on creating your amazing AI-generated artwork without any hassle. It's practically foolproof. Fool what? Idiot save. Ah, idiotensicher. All right, let's get started. Open up the manager and navigate to the model manager section. In the search bar, type in SYN to quickly locate the new all-in-one control net model from SYNSER. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to check out our previous videos for more context and detailed explanations of various topics, including control net. And please excuse any roughness in today's video. Our goal is to provide you with a quick and efficient rundown of this exciting new model, even if it means sacrificing a bit of polish. At this point in the video, We've sped up the footage to save you from watching the entire download process in real time. We know you're familiar with the process and want to get straight to the point, so feel free to sit back and enjoy the time lapse. The model will save at Comfy UI Models ControlNet SDXL. I'll take over SDXL ControlNet Union SDXL 1.0. Here we find the Diffusion Union ControlNet model. We're going to rename the model to make it easier to find and distinguish from other models. While this step is optional, we find it helpful for keeping our workflow organized and efficient. If you also prefer a more streamlined setup, feel free to follow along and give your model a descriptive name. We'll copy the model to the same directory as the other ControlNet models. Alternatively, you can modify the path in the extra underscore model underscore paths dot YAML file under Comfy UI but we typically reserve that approach for our working environments. In this training setup, our goal is to keep things simple and easy to follow, ensuring that the process can be replicated under normal conditions. To ensure that the newly added model can be located and accessed, we need to perform a quick restart of Comfy. This will refresh the system and allow the ControlNet Union SDXL 1.0 model to be recognized and ready for use in your AI image generation projects. Before we move on, let's quickly select the new ControlNet Union SDXL 1.0 model in the ControlNet loaders. Once that's done, we'll save our workflow to preserve these changes and ensure that our setup is fully updated with the latest model additions. Here
Here's a bonus tip for you. If you click on the small arrow located right next to the save button, your workflow will be directly saved under comfy UI backslash Pusses workflows, provided you have the Pusses nodes installed, which is essential for working or playing with our workflows. Additionally, by using the small arrow situated just above the load button, you can easily select and load any of your saved workflows without needing to navigate through your files. These handy shortcuts can help you manage your workflows more efficiently and keep your creative process flowing smoothly. Let's use the image of the little girl from our previous videos as a reference. Although it may not be perfect, it serves as a great example for demonstrating the effects and adjustments we can achieve using the new ControlNet Union SDXL 1.0 model. Unfortunately, our 8 GB of VRAM puts us in the low VRAM mode when using this control net, resulting in a longer generation time. To keep things moving along, we'll speed up the video so you don't have to wait too long. However, we've heard rumors that Shin Sir may be working on a model that requires less VRAM, which would be a welcome improvement for users with more modest graphics cards. But for now, it's just a rumor. We'll have to wait and see what the future holds. For this demonstration, we'll employ the Canny preprocessor along with the one for all ControlNet model. As you can see, the combination of these two components produces excellent results. The Scribble preprocessor also works remarkably well. Although the generated image includes some peculiarities, like the girl having three arms, it's worth noting that this is a result of the same feature present in the original input image. Nevertheless, the ControlNet model performs admirably, effectively transferring the distinctive qualities of the source image to the resulting output. To explore the capabilities of the ControlNet model further, we're going to adjust some parameters. We'll reduce the strength from 1 to 0.6, allowing the model to start influencing the image generation process at 0.2 and stopping its effects after 0.8. By observing the changes in the generated output, we can gain a deeper understanding of how these adjustments impact the final result. Stay tuned to see what happens. You've changed too much, but never mind. You've got a sharp eye, folks. As you may have noticed, our previous adjustment was a bit too strong, but that's all part of the learning process. Moving forward, let's delve into the exciting combination of Open Pose and the All-in-One ControlNet model. By bringing these two powerful tools together, we can unlock a world of creative possibilities and craft highly detailed, customizable images tailored to your artistic vision. Haha, <laughs> that's quite the sight, sis. Your shrunken head looks quite peculiar in the palm of a hand. It's definitely an unusual image, but the quality of the control net is undeniably impressive, as it allows for such detailed and creative transformations. Let's switch things up and experiment with a different image. Remember that picture we transformed through image to image, where we turned Murphy into a woman before a castle? Well, we're going to revisit that image and see how we can further enhance it using ControlNet. Hey there, folks! It looks like OpenPose is a pretty powerful preprocessor when it comes to ControlNet. It can help estimate human poses and detect key points on the body, hands, and face, a real game changer for AI artists working with human figures and images. We've noticed that the DW Pose Estimator can sometimes encounter problems. While VRAM limitations might be a possible cause, we've found that switching to the Open Pose Pose preprocessor can offer a more reliable solution. Keep this in mind if you're running into any difficulties with the DW Pose Estimator. Hey there, viewers! We've got some exciting content coming up. If you're interested in seeing us revamp our workflow on the fly, stick around. But if you're itching to get started with the ControlNet model right away, You've got everything you need with the V5.0 workflow. Just load the new model and dive in. Now, before you go, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you're eager to learn more, subscribing to our channel is the way to go. OK, 
Okay, let's start with the Mohawk model. This model is known for its versatility. The reason we're unlocking the control knit groups is not to create more space, but rather because we no longer need them in our workflow. By unlocking these groups, we'll be able to move them around as needed and eventually delete them. Ich schieb das Zeugs mal weg. Sorry. I mean, I move the groups around. Yes, sis, then push nicely, but hey, watch out for the preview image. Ja, ja. Ich weiß. I'm pushing it back again. Great, let's proceed with deleting the unnecessary nodes. To do this, hold down the control key on your keyboard and hover your mouse over the nodes you wish to remove. This multi-selection method will allow you to quickly and efficiently clean up your workflow. In our workflow, we've included a context big node from the rank three nodes. This handy feature allows us to gather all important components and effortlessly switch between groups as we work on our AI image generation tasks. The context big node is an invaluable asset for maintaining organization and efficiency within your workflow, as it provides easy access to essential elements and simplifies navigation between groups. We'll want to copy the control net loader node, the advanced apply control net node, and the preview bridge node. To do this, simply hold down the alt key on your keyboard, click on the desired nodes, and drag them to the appropriate location within your workflow. Now that we've copied the necessary nodes, let's tidy up the workflow by deleting any remaining elements we no longer need. So, let's roll up our sleeves and give our workflow a good spring cleaning. With our workspace nice and tidy, we can now move on to connecting the key components for our updated workflow. We'll start by linking the positive and negative conditioning, the control net model, and the reference image. Simply drag and connect the corresponding noodles to establish these essential connections within your workflow. Attach noodles between the positive and negative conditioning outputs from the apply control net node and the rank three big context node. It's worth mentioning two particularly helpful nodes for your workflow, the control net preprocessor of the eight venture nodes, recommended by Murphy, and the AIO awk preprocessor node from the control net preprocessors. These nodes act like a multiprocessor, allowing you to conveniently select and apply various preprocessing techniques directly within the node itself. The eight venture node offers an extensive range of preprocessors that you can easily access and use. While the AIO AUX preprocessor node provides a user-friendly interface that streamlines the preprocessing process, saving you time and effort. By incorporating these versatile nodes into your workflow, you'll have all the essential tools you need to optimize your images. Ooh, that's a lot, let's take the one from Artventure. For a seamless workflow, we'll now connect the 8 Venture Control Net Preprocessor node to the Preview Image node. Nimm doch bitte das Bild im Türkleid von mir. For this demonstration, we'll use the image of Sis in a tool dress allowing us to showcase the power and versatility of the 8 Venture Control Knit preprocessor node when applied to a real-world example. Yo.
Juhu, los geht's. Let's go. Scheiße, was? Ah, jetzt ja. You forget to connect the image noodle. Oops, looks like I forgot to connect the image noodle, but don't worry, it's a minor mistake that we can quickly fix. Simply connect the image noodle to ensure proper integration of the 8 Venture ControlNet preprocessor node, and watch as your AI generated artwork takes shape. Remember, small hiccups like these are just part of the creative journey, so let's learn from them and keep moving forward. The process is running smoothly. But because our laptop only has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, we're stuck in low VRAM mode. This means generating the image might take a bit longer. To keep you from getting bored, we'll speed up the video. While we were busy creating this video, Murphy has been work revamping the workflow with some features. He's added buttons to enable or disable the two control net groups, allowing them to function independently or together, depending on your preferences. We'll upload this updated workflow to Civit AI soon for you to enjoy. Unfortunately, we're still experiencing issues with OpenArt. If they can't resolve these problems, we may need to consider alternative platforms. To wrap things up, we've got some incredible images created using this workflow for you to check out. We hope you have fun exploring them. And who knows? Murphy might even find some time during his vacation to create something new. IP adapter in the automatic workflow, I love the stuff from Matteo. Indeed, we'll see what the future holds for the IP adapter integration. And yes, Murphy's survey about in-paint or caricatures shouldn't be too difficult to implement. It's great that he's keeping an eye on what you all might be interested in seeing next. Until next time, farewell. Enjoy the images, and we'll see you soon with more exciting AI-generated artwork. Keep those creative juices flowing. Bye friends.